Welcome to the Tomosi Business Training Series. The basis of these sessions is to support the Tomosi Group staff and management to raise their capabilities and performance. The series is also a platform to share our experience with young entrepreneurs making an effort to build their startups in Uganda and across Africa. Point number two is this. You need, or maybe I pose it as a question, do you define as a leader, as a manager, specifications for the problems that the answers you are looking for in a decision will uh, satisfy? Do you establish the conditions that give you a range of options as a decision maker to work and work with? What I'm describing here is the term we call boundary conditions in decision making. The question here is, what is the minimum that this decision you are making, what will it accomplish minimally, especially if you are dealing with a generic problem? Simply assuming that a decision you have made will, will depend on all conditions going right, such as the assumption that this decision I've made, the economy will grow by X percentage. The competition will behave this way. Technology will change within this band. This is a wrong way to make a decision boundary. In other words, there is a great deal of need for scenario planning and anticipation of what can go wrong that you must embed in a decision. Many of you know I like reading, and I like reading history books. Many years ago, I read a book by a British author. His name is Christopher Clark. I think the book is called Sleepwalkers. Christopher Clark talks about the First World War, and he describes a scenario. The German forces had been working on this plan for 10 years, from about 1905. It was developed by their chief of general staff, a man called Alfred von Schilfen. Schilfen wanted to apply what the ancient African general, some of you read history, the Carthaginian general called Hannibal, he used this plan at the Battle of Cannae against the mighty Roman Empire in the year 216 BC. He encircled and defeated the Roman uh, army. Schilfen planned that in event of war against his allies, France and Russia, Germany would first hold down the supposedly weak enemy, who at the time was Russia, as the German forces advanced at lightning speed through the country of Luxembourg, Belgium, to defeat the stronger enemy, supposedly France. This was 1905. But by August 1914, when actual war broke out, the logistics the men, the material conditions had vastly changed. Even Schilfen himself had been replaced by another leader in the army. Yet the plan that he had developed and the boundary conditions for the decisions of war that he had assumed, these things held firm without major realignments. The German command, for example, did not anticipate that Russia, the presumed weak enemy, would hold strong in a sustained fight in a short time. Russia didn't just hold strong, but the Russia even drove through Eastern Prussia, East Germany, at a fast pace, and they took German territory. The Germans, who had relied on their Schilfen plan, underestimated the enemy, and they soon began to improvise, fighting at both ends of their country, East and West, a feat impossible to manage in a war. Now, for this and many other reasons, Germany lost the war in 1918. What's the moral of this story? In decision making, yes, we must start with opinions, with feelings, but we must quickly interrogate these feelings and opinions much deeper, take them to the lab, create a hypothesis out of this, drill down to the facts of a situation, and develop a strategic plan, one that can withstand the change of circumstances. Often when, for example, we recruit relatives, this is an example that we may know very well in, 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 in Uganda, in Africa. Often when we recruit relatives and friends in a business, in a company, in an organization, as we tend to do in our country, these relatives have no skill sets for what needs to be done. When we do that, we have made a decision to improvise further down the road by spending more money, recruiting other people to fill the gaps, even before we plan the journey <laughs> to the destination. Remember the purpose that we shared in our earlier um, uh, conversations. 
we have to improvise with those relatives because sucking them complicates other family relationships in the end. A relative is only good if they win on merit and if they start at the bottom rung and prove that they care more about the successful whole than pleasing one person who they may be related to. To paraphrase Peter Drucker, a decision maker must establish an appropriate measurement for what would be the outcome of a decision, its impact and its uprightness, and avoid traditional measurements because they are based on yesterday's decisions. One must adopt what's new and relevant because by the fact of a need to measure the possible impact and outcomes of a decision ahead, it means yesterday has been rendered irrelevant. Point number three in the material conditions for decision making. A decision is only called a decision if it is backed by time, because time is a constant resource for all of us. If it is backed by management, if it is backed by resources and budgets. If it doesn't have that backing, a decision is an exercise in futility. It is speculation if the decision is not backed by these elements. It is often like the mission and vision statements we make in businesses and institutions in public arena. But we find it difficult to translate these into action beyond the lifeless framed wall hanging images in our offices. Yes, without a vision written down, Yes, without particular needs settled on paper, it is not possible to begin the journey that you hope to sustain over a long haul. Rules, budgets, policies must be written. They must be known. But writing isn't enough. In Africa, we actually tend to write much and do little in practical terms. This writing much is a disease we pick from schools that don't let us get to a point where we know how to unite thoughts, intentions, and actions to produce a good or a service. I have said this before, I'm often embarrassed when we launch projects holding some manila paper and a style-bound little document in a big conference with big people stretching their hands to the paper. Real action, however limited, given the resources, but well-planned, makes a decision get the full breath and body and it becomes an entity and a reality. We will resume next week with three more elements, three more ingredients of, of effective decision making. Have a great weekend. We would like to hear from you. Please email us at info at and visit our website at www.tapmedia.com. You can also visit our offices located at Tomosi Business Park, Luzira, Port Billboard or call 0414-220-702. Thank you.